So hi everyone, I'm Shreya Patar and today I'm going to talk to you about LinkedIn lead generation. I saw that some of you said that you are sort of active, just starting out on LinkedIn, um, not very active yet, posting once a week. So I think this is one of the reasons that I really love talking about LinkedIn as you know, when I'm conducting these sessions, because I think so many people just overlook LinkedIn as a content creation platform, as a lead generation platform. Everyone's talking about Twitter, everyone's talking about Instagram, but LinkedIn is just this gem that for some reason everyone's been ignoring for the last few years. So today I want to talk to you about that. How do you make the most of LinkedIn? We're going to talk all the way from setting up your profile to creating content to generating leads, give you a broad overview about everything you need to know. So yeah, let's get started. So first I just want to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Shreya. I run a LinkedIn branding agency. So we Whatever I'm talking to you about today is something that we do for founders and CEOs across the world. I'm also a content writer and creator. And especially on Instagram, I teach people how to start freelancing, how to use LinkedIn, how to monetize LinkedIn and things like that. And apart from that, I've written seven ebooks. I love writing ebooks. I've written seven of them, again, about how to freelance, how to grow on LinkedIn, how to conduct sales calls, such topics. And specifically on LinkedIn, I've been creating content on the platform for over four years. So I've been on LinkedIn since before creating content was even a thing on LinkedIn, right? And I have almost 140,000 followers on LinkedIn. And just based on how much content I've been posting over the years, I've gotten this name called the LinkedIn girl from my audience. So that's something that I, you know, I stick with even now. And just in terms of like what we do, our goal is as an agency is that we help our uh, help our clients with organic marketing. It's not that we, we don't run ads and ads are also very specific to company pages. But what we do is personal branding. So we help get all these numbers in terms of impressions, reach, views, millions and millions of views, which then convert into sales. And of course, I'm going to talk to you about how how we do this and how you can do this for yourself along with generating sales through your LinkedIn profile. So again, I just want to give you a quick overview of why LinkedIn. Why am I talking about LinkedIn? Why, why have I been prioritizing LinkedIn for all these years, even though nobody ever said that, oh, you know what, you should actually be on LinkedIn. People still don't consider it important. So here are a few things. First, of course, you build an audience. Second is that you build a personal brand and you build that sort of brand recall where once you're active on LinkedIn, people remember you and it actually sparks conversations even in your life. You can raise awareness about what you do as a service, as a profession, um, anything else related to your hobbies and interests that you want to monetize. You can talk about that. You can get leads and clients. And the best part is that you can do it all organically, which is something that other platforms like Twitter and Instagram are still lacking in terms of just how, how much potential there is to get organic reach. So on LinkedIn, you, you don't have to like slowly and steadily grow your following. You don't have to think that, oh, I need a certain number of followers for my content to reach a certain number of people. But LinkedIn has very high organic reach. So my first post on LinkedIn went viral with one and a half million views. Since then, I've had multiple posts go viral with like, you know, 500,000, another million, million of views. And again, for our clients as well, even if they are at, let's say, 2,000 followers, we still have posts that have got, gone from like, you know, their average of, let's say, 3,000 views to having posts which have done 100,000, 150,000 practically overnight. So LinkedIn has that organic potential that you can make the most of. And I think that is a very solid reason to add LinkedIn to your, you know, your content creation strategy and your lead generation strategy as well. So just to talk about how do you get started with LinkedIn? Now, all these points that I'm going to cover are very relevant in direction of like they're all going to add up to the importance of generating leads from LinkedIn. And one of the most important is to actually pick a niche. I see so many people who want to create content on LinkedIn, but they talk about so many different topics. They're consistent. Yes, their content is high quality. Yes, but the number of topics that they talk about is just so many that I, I can't relate one core pain point of mind to them. I can't think of, okay, why would I want to ever reach out to them? I don't know exactly what they do. It's just all very big. So it's so important that you pick a niche, you decide exactly what you want to talk about on LinkedIn and what is it that you're looking to gain from LinkedIn. For example, like I said, I run a LinkedIn branding agency, but at the same time, I also teach freelancing, but I don't do both on 
on LinkedIn, I only use LinkedIn for lead generation, sometimes to sell my eBooks, but otherwise it's mainly lead generation. And I keep all my freelancing and you know, uh, all the topics related to how to make money online. I keep those for Instagram. So I have different audiences on each platform. And I think that's helped me maximize the sort of leads and the number of leads and the quality of leads that I get from each platform. So it's very important that you pick a niche. It will help you build a focused personal brand. And I talked about brand recall, right? So because I talk so much about LinkedIn, because I talk about certain topics are just like my highlight. I talk about them a lot. Uh, funny enough, one of the things I have been talking about a lot is about my dad's ad advice for building my business or for lighting and things like that. So at a point, I used to talk about that so much on LinkedIn that Shreya's dad became a thing on LinkedIn and everyone started like looking forward to those posts. Everyone started asking me more about what other advice has my dad given me? What has his role been in helping me out here and supporting my career? And it just became a thing. So apart from LinkedIn, this whole concept of Shreya's dad has helped build this sort of brand recall. And it's actually been very good because I stand out. And of course, it works for lead gen as well, because again, once you stand out, you have more reach, you have more impressions, you have a solid, obviously, hang on writing. And then you just start generating more inbound inquiries and engagement as well. So again, once you have this particular niche, it also improves your engagement rate because when somebody is following you after reading a post about a certain topic, they expect you to write more about that. So if you're writing about, let's say, about how to generate leads from emails, if you offer some sort of cold emailing services, and if you just keep writing about that, then people who are following you for that specific kind of post and specific topic will look forward to more of that. And if you keep giving them what they're expecting, then obviously your engagement rate and your impressions will all shoot up. And finally, of course, everything just links back to if you're building a focused audience who knows exactly what you do and what you have to offer, and they are interested in what you have to offer, it will increase your potential of lead generation and monetization. So for the longest time, I've been talking about multiple different topics on my LinkedIn. So I used to talk about teaching freelancing, about uh, writing, specifically about content writing as well, about LinkedIn, about Instagram, about uh, lead generation, all these different topics. And that time my lead quality was really low. And also the number of leads I generated was really low. But since the last couple of months and the last year, I focused more on only talking about my agency, about building in public, about um, the kind of life I have by being self-employed and all the uh, you know, all the ups and downs associated with it. And that's increased the quality of leads I get because it just acts as such a good behind the scenes and such a good, like, you know, building in public kind of concept on LinkedIn. Now, the second thing that I want to talk about that you should really fix before you start pushing content regularly on LinkedIn is your profile. So especially in your profile, I would suggest that you focus on these five things. The rest of it in terms of your job experience, in terms of your education and things like that, you update it once and you're good for like probably a year or so. You don't need to keep changing those things often. And also that's not something that people would spend a lot of time reading. But this one, your profile in terms of your name, your profile picture, headline, banner, about section, basically whatever you see on the screen right now, all this stuff is the first thing that people are going to see. And it's where you need to do the most of your selling, right? So in terms of your profile picture, just have something. I'm, I think you can smile. It's completely okay to smile on a platform like LinkedIn as well. So you can smile. And then uh, in terms of your headline, I always recommend having some sort of a USB or having some sort of a core outcome that you offer your, what's, what's your value add? You should mention that in the headline. So when somebody sees your profile, just by reading this or your banner, they should know exactly what you can do for them and why they should be reaching out to you. Another imp important thing about your headline is that your headline acts as SEO. So if you want to be found by the words of ghostwriter and content writer, you should have those words in your headline. That's the only reason I have a very busy headline right now, because I want to be found for words like ghostwriter, content creator, ebook writer. And so I wanted to include these because like I said, they act as SEO. If somebody searches for content writer on LinkedIn, and if you're active on LinkedIn, if your profile is one of those top profiles, it will pop up uh, in, in their search tab. So 
make sure you add some sort of a value. Your, what's the value proposition you have? What's your value add? You add it here in your headline. And you can add something similar in your banner as well. And below this, there's also an about section where you can sort of like add your story, add how you got started, add maybe testimonials and recommendations, even in the about section. Like what do people say about you? And like that's just going to be so good to get out exactly what it is that you do. And again, to like just have that clarity, like, okay, you're a content writer, but what sort of content writer? If you help with lead gen, but what sort of lead gen? Exactly. How do you help people? Video editing. Okay. What sort of video editing? In your case, what sort of copyright? Do you do long form sales copy? Do you do ad copy? Do you do like, you know, ghostwriting in terms of LinkedIn or Twitter or any other social media platform? The more clarity you can offer, again, the better results you'll see in terms of your engagement, your impressions, and your lead gen as well. Now, especially if you're creating content on LinkedIn, it's important that you turn on creator mode. So creator mode is available right below your profile. You'll see the option of creator mode. Now, once you turn it on, here's what will change on your profile. First of all, wherever there's a connect tab on your profile, that will automatically change to following. So whenever people come to your profile first, they have the option to follow you instead of first connect with you. Right. So that's one thing that changes. Second thing that changes is obviously your profile becomes more content creation first. So you get this option talks about and then you get the option to add up to five hashtags. These five hashtags, again, they act as SEO. So once you fix this and once you turn the creator mode on, you'll have the option to edit these hashtags and again, increase and improve the way you're found on LinkedIn. And the final thing that the creator mode actually helps with is it puts all your content on the top of your profile. So your featured section goes on top and all your new content goes on the top, top of your profile. And then your experience and, you know, your work experience, your university experience, all of that comes below. Um, so once you turn it on again, it just kind of starts pushing your content first. And that's how you get discovered better uh, in terms of being a, a creator. You also have this option right here where you can add a URL and you can also customize the, the text on the URL. So this is also great. I've used this in the past to like, okay, book a sales call, like book a discovery call with me or book a paid consultation call with me, book a paid strategy call with me. And now I'm just using it for my newsletter. So you can keep changing it, obviously, but just make sure you, you customize this text that comes up as well, because it's just a good way to make it clear what the link will lead to. So make sure you turn the creator mode on. Like I said, it's just below your profile. Once you see this part of your profile, just scroll down and you'll see the option to turn the creator mode on. The next, and I think the most important thing obviously about all of this is to start creating content on LinkedIn. So in this section, I just want to talk to you a little bit about the different types of content you can create. Um, I don't want to spend too much time telling you how to write the content because you all are in a Beals community. You you're, you're all copywriters, you know exactly how writing works. I just want to give you a few tips about, okay, relevant to LinkedIn, about how, how to create content on LinkedIn. But otherwise, I would say use all your copywriting skills to come up with this, the hook for your content, for the CTA for your content, all of these things. But just, I'm just going to give, uh, give you an overview anyway. So the first thing I'm going to talk is just about the content creation checklist. So you should plan out the frequency of your content, the, the ideal situation it would be best to post at least one post every single day on linkedin one post is more than enough by the way so one post every day on linkedin would be the ideal if you're already creating content on some other platform then you can repurpose that content and that way you can keep up with the consistency for linkedin as well but otherwise even if you don't have time or if you're just new or if you can't think of topics like you're still kind of struggling with linkedin i would say try to post at least three times a week so it could be roughly once every alternate day. And that's also a very good on and frequency to, to start with. Like you'll see a huge difference if you just start posting three times a week. I would also say that you plan your preferred post type. Since I'm a writer and since our core scale obviously is writing as an agency and we offer LinkedIn, LinkedIn content creation services, I focus a lot on my writing. So I focus on long form and short form content which is very text heavy. I don't do a lot of carousels. I don't do a lot of tweet style content on LinkedIn. I focus a lot on storytelling, which is our core USP as an agency, storytelling. 
So I would say, depending on what sort of service you offer and depending on what you want to be known for, also plan your preferred post type. Do you want to do long form, more of long form, short form? Do you want to do carousels, which is like your images? You can upload those images as a PDF so that they become like, you know, swiping files basically on, um, do you want to use more of pictures? Do you want to do more of like one-liners and tweet style content? Or do you want to be like super long form and like exhaust the 3000 character limit on LinkedIn? You can do that as well sometimes. And then when you're planning your preferred post type, obviously you are thinking about what your audience would like, what, what your target, you know, the, the kind of people that you want to work with as clients, what kind of content would they be interested in consuming? What do you think would help them the most? That's something you should base your preferred post type on. Also have a CTA in mind. Obviously you can be using con uh, LinkedIn for lead generation, but that doesn't mean that for every single post you want to get leads, you want to get inbound leads. It could be in terms of, okay, you want to start with your following growth. If you want to get more followers, your CTA could be something like, uh, follow me at Shreya Patar for more. So I've used that and I just tag myself. So people will just click my profile and start following me. So that helps with followers. For leads, I'll show you some examples towards the end of this presentation about how you can create CTAs for leads. If you want more impressions and you want more comments, then the idea would be to ask some, some sort of uh, a question in your CTA that would make the reader want to respond. And obviously the more specific your question is, if you just ask something like, agreed or do you agree or what do you think about this it's not a good prompt for the reader to think about it. what am i supposed to say to this how am i supposed to answer this but when you're very specific let's say you've mentioned like five points in a in, in your post if you say okay which of these five points stood out to you the most or which of these mistakes are you making or which of these uh things did you fix recently when you become very specific about you know how you want someone to answer um, or to comment on your post, it improves your engagement rate. You give your audience the direction and you give a clear call to action about obviously what action do you want them to take. So if you're looking for more comments, then obviously have a very clear CTA about, it should be like a exam paper, right? Very clear about what they need to talk about in, in the answer. And if you want more newsletter subscribers, then you could have a CTA, something like, um, if you like this post, check out the link in the comments and subscribe to my newsletter. And then you just add the link in the comments. So that's a overview of a content creation checklist. And keeping this in mind, I want to talk about how do you create high engaging LinkedIn posts? So I've narrowed it down to a few elements. Obviously you must have heard of all of these things, but again, I'm just going to give you an overview anyway. And I hope that maybe there's something different you find here, um, even as copywriters yourselves. So you must have heard obviously of the AIDA model of marketing. This is something that I've just adopted for LinkedIn content creation as well. I feel like it just fits so well. First is, you know, the, the IDA model is attention, interest, desire, and action. So first, what I mean by attention is that you have a strong hook that grabs the attention of your reader. When I say interest, it means you have that sort of buildup going on in your content that makes the person like it, it gives context into the hook. Then you have the desire, which is more build up. You just want people to keep reading. You want to give away more of the story, more of the explanation, and you want to clarify more things. And then finally you have the action. Now, the action would be the big bang or, and the CTA in your post. I think the action is the most important part of it, especially when I talk about the big bang, because so many people, they start off with a, a good post and it's, okay you're giving some information you're giving information you're saying something new you're saying something fresh but then what like it's miss punch it's missing the the soul factor which you may have heard of as writers after you write a linkedin post just like ask yourself okay what i've written this but so what how does it help my reader how does it help my audience and that's just going to be a very good indicator of whether your content has that punch or if it's just like falling flat because it doesn't really you know, have something to give away at the end of the post. And then you have your CTA as well. So this is the usual format I like to follow. And this is something I've actually, if I fluke, like I never really noticed it. But then at some point when I was doing one of these presentations, I realized that, oh, there's a pattern here. And the pattern is very similar to this AIDA model. And I just decided, okay, this is how we plan our content from now on. 
I want to give you a few examples here. So in terms of keeping these elements in mind, um, I'm giving you three examples first of short form content, very simple, very basic, very tweet style content, actually. And then I'll give you some examples of more creative long form content as well. So this is one of the posts that I did last year, which is it did really well. Consider like I didn't expect a post like this to do very well, but it had almost 100,000 views. And it's simple, right? Freel freelancing is simple. Things you need, one, two, three. Things you don't need, one, two, three. Don't complicate it. You can literally make your first order in the next four hours. I, I would say more than the views, just like look at the comments. There's 132 comments. And most of these comments were actually about Oh, you're oversimplifying this. It's not true. Freelancing is simple. Yes, but you're missing things like dedication and hard work and commitment and persistence and a passion, and all of that. And, you know, pe people just had a lot more to add, even though there is no CTA here. I think that's just because it was a bit, it just provoked people a bit about how am I saying that freelancing is so simple? And why am I just saying that, oh, you could be finding your next client in 24 hours and why am I just simplifying it to this level? So this post did very well just because it provoked people. And the hook hook is, I think the hook is too simple, which worked. People are like, okay, freelancing is simple. How is she saying that? We are all here struggling how, on how to freelance. So why is she saying this particular thing? So that's how the hook kind of worked. And obviously you can look at the post. It's very easy to read it's easy on the eyes visually it's spaced out i have a lot of gaps there's no paragraphs there's no heavy text going on here and that just adds to the whole um, reading experience on linkedin or any platform now another way i really liked um, was like to have this hook of how to be a broke freelancer now the reason this post stood out like if you see this post has like one third the impressions but it still has half more than half the number of uh, likes and 81 comments. And that's again, just because of the different um, form of writing here. So nobody's gonna teach you how to be a broke freelancer. Yeah. So when I say how to be a broke freelancer, it's such a big question mark, right? What is she talking about? And then I basically have the list of all those things that you shouldn't do if you don't wanna be a broke freelancer, right? So it's just like, just reverse the whole, like I flipped the narrative here. And again, I'm very focused on how it looks visually. So it's just like some sort of a pyramid and I move things around to make sure that it has that visual appeal and it's easy to read when you're scrolling through. All right. And then we have, this is again, another very simple pose that I had that if you're in your twenties, you should, and then you have a, sh a short list. And if you notice, none of these have a CTA. It's just something so broad and vague that it just did well in terms of engagement. These posts, by the way, were meant for engagement. I didn't want them to generate leads, not generate leads. These were meant to get more, just like to put my profile up on the radar, to get more impressions, to get more comments, to get more views and get more profile views. That was the whole idea. So if you're in your twenties, you should, and then just have a short list. And it's surprising to me, but a lot of people actually get triggered if you just tell them to eat more protein. Apparently that's bad for you. So yeah, that also added to the comments and my DMs a lot. So you, you never know what can, you know, kind of piss people off. Yeah. So that's like some of those, you know, formalish kind of posts where you're like very straightforward, very simple, focusing a lot on just getting straight to the point. But I think even though LinkedIn is this professional platform, you can be creative with it and you should be creative with it because that's how you will stand out. I think so many people on LinkedIn just focus on trying to use the words like synergy for everything, but that's not the point. That, that's not how you use LinkedIn. LinkedIn and content creation on LinkedIn is a way to get, you know, like I said, to make yourself known, to make people aware of what you do, but also to make people aware of who you are and just like, Give a hint at your personality, at your writing style, at your personal interest. Like talk more about that, which is why this is actually my favorite kind of content. This is the kind of content that I love creating on LinkedIn. It's the kind of content that's story first, that's about me, that's long form, that has a lot of imagery to it. It has a lot of things that people can think about and imagine. Um, it usually has an image to like complement it. And it does really well as well. So this is a post that I did earlier this year, just about like, like a recap of 2022, what I'm looking forward to in 2023. And it had 282,000 impressions on LinkedIn. And 
this post, I think it was just very simple. Like in 2022, I lived the ideal life of a LinkedIn content creator. Still, I barely published content on LinkedIn because I wasn't active on LinkedIn. That's what this post is about. So there's this hook. And then I have this whole list of achievements, everything that I did this year. And I wanted to like make it personal and professional. So I'm talking about my highest revenue months. I'm talking about like graduating. I'm talking about my first work trip and my first course. But I'm also talking about moving to Dubai, about moving into my first apartment, about getting my driving license and getting my first car. And, you know, just talking more about that. This is just half the post, by the way, there was long, it almost hit the complete 3000 character limit on LinkedIn. And it still did well, just because I think of the imagery and it was very relatable in terms of, okay, so many things start happening, but you still don't write about it sometimes. And that's okay. Um, and I decided to use a picture, like a lot of different pictures, because it just goes well with um, this, like I'm talking about so many things. So I just wanted to create a collage like, okay, my graduation, Dubai, working out, and my car. So just thought it would make sense. So you can be creative. And in terms of being creative, this is a post that I did at the end of Jan, which is about January was a month of disappointments. And again, I kind of flipped the narrative here and I made it so much about, okay, uh, I had to disappoint myself by actually waking up early. I had to disappoint myself by not being lazy. I had to disappoint myself by... Um, learning to like say no when I wanted to say yes or saying yes when I wanted to say no and things like that. Just, just disappointing myself in ways that would lead to positive results. This is different. I feel like this is a very different kind of post, but it did really well. And that actually got me a lot of leads. All, all of the that I'm showing you in terms of this long form content, they got me a lot of leads because they were just so unique. And even though I wasn't directly selling anything here, it was so clear that if we work with a client, this is the kind of content we're going to bring for them. We're going to be creative. We're going to be uh, experimenting on different things. And we're going to bring something that's not templatized content, but something that's them and something that's, you know, engaging and interesting to read. So sure, can you can you real quick and say something? Yeah, yeah, yeah so This sure. is what talking about. So there's no reason, like you don't have to call uh, do cold DMs and cold emails if this is the type of content that you're publishing every day. Like you're showing people, I am a copywriter, I know how to write. So it's obvious that people, like when people need help with copywriting, they're going to think of you first. I get so many leads just from me uh, shit posting online because they're like, just the other day, I'll, I'll, I'll DM I got. It's like, this guy is talking to me and he ended up becoming a lead and we're probably going to do some work together. He's like, you should do X, Y, and Z because you don't give a fuck what anybody thinks and you'd be amazing doing X, Y, Z content. So just show people what you can do and people are going to want to hire you, but you're not showing them. So why would they want to hire you? Go ahead, Shreya. Yeah, that's definitely important. And it's good that you brought it up because I want to that LinkedIn is my number one legion source. It's been that way for four years. So like I would say 90% of my leads come through LinkedIn and of that, you know, most of them are inbound because I actually don't do cold outreach. I don't enjoy it. I don't particularly, um, you know, I feel like it's just not something that I want to get into yet, but still LinkedIn just works so well as an inbound lead gen source. And again, the reason it can sustain and help me scale my business is because the quality of leads just keeps increasing with the quality of content that goes up, right? So yeah, I don't, I've done much cold outreach. I have run a few campaigns, so I will talk to you about that in a bit. But LinkedIn, just creating content on LinkedIn itself is going to help you so much. And if you can do it in a way that stands out and try not to like just copy paste other people's content or the, the way that they're creating content on LinkedIn, that's what's going to be a game changer for you. That's what's going to get you those high quality leads and those high ticket leads that these other people are missing out on, even though they're active on LinkedIn. Yeah. So, yeah. So the, uh, the two types of posts that actually worked very well in terms of lead gen. Another that worked really well was actually this post. And I talked about, okay, people think I'm self-made, but the truth is, and then I had this whole list of, you know, all these people in my, uh, like my family, my neighbors, my friends, my mentors, and how they like supported me. And I just ended up with like, okay, so if that's self-made, then I'm self-made. And I just used this picture, uh, which apparently triggered a lot of people again, because it has 191 comments, because, you know, some people think that you're not supposed to use pictures on LinkedIn, but that's totally fine. And the reason I used this picture was obviously because 
it has that strong self-made self like you know that confident kind of vibe it really went well with this post so no matter what people say i would say like it's fine to use pictures it's also good because linkedin is pushing pictures right now linkedin is big on media and the more you use pictures of yourself not infographics not those uh, you know what do you say not those kind of pictures that you can make on canva and like have one liner or something on it not not, not that kind of stuff but more like your pictures that add to the post that's just going to do very well again this this did really well on linkedin because people just like my personality through this people were like oh you know like in a world where most people don't want to give like they want to take credit for everything i just like how you know you came up and you talked about all these different people who supported you and you're not trying to make it all about yourself and i just thought like i would love to you know speak to someone like that so a couple of people actually spoke to me like they booked a call with me because they liked that about me so again another way to stand out is just by showing your personality showing your values and it does help meet some really good people and you know get some really good leads online now again like just in terms of even though all these posts were so heavy they they have a lot of writing they have a lot of words here as you can see they're still easy on the eyes because i space out my lines and you should too again linkedin is a social media platform so you want to make sure that you make it very scrolling friendly like people should be able to read while they scroll kind of thing so space out your lines use short sentences use everyday words like nothing about this is difficult to understand it's all super easy super simple it gives that sort of imagery in your head that's what you want as a reader don't clutter your post with hashtags or people tags so like you can see i have this very one second yeah so i have these three four specific like you know fixed hashtags i use in i use post so shreya writes is something that i use across all my platforms because that's just like my signature at the end of every post but other than that i use these three hashtags content writer content writer sometimes i'll use something like linkedin or ghost writer and that's pretty much it i don't tag out of people i don't add a lot of hashtags like this post had only only this and it still did well so linkedin is not hashtag dependent hashtags don't make any difference to your post it can help with seo sometimes which is why i use some of them but otherwise you don't need to worry about like hashtags and how many you're using and which ones you're using don't worry too much about it and then i would also suggest that um the the feed doesn't work for everyone but linkedin is now going to start you know once you add pictures it will automatically convert into a carousel but it's not out for everyone yet so if it isn't out for you and you're planning to upload multiple pictures i would recommend just putting it up as a pdf like you can just use canva add your pictures there download it as a pdf and then when you upload the file as a pdf it will just be something that can be scrolled it won't become that weird uh you know disproportionate kind of collage on linkedin so it's just easier to see the pictures as well and obviously like i told you use pictures like all these these two were my performing posts all of them had pictures in the weeks um this this has like almost 700000 impressions or more and all of them were picture posts so definitely use pictures linkedin is big on them right now and finally i want to talk to you about lead gen strategies so again i'm going to focus on content how can you use content to generate leads and the second part of it would also be cold outreach how do you call out reach to generate leads so i would say regardless of what you do even if you want to do cold outreach make sure you create content as well because when you're reaching out to people the first thing they're going to see is your profile and when they see your profile when they see your content that's what's going to help you solidify that sort of trust and that sort of intention from the prospect that okay yeah i want to actually at least get on a call with with the person that i've never heard about so i would say no matter what sort of lead gen system you pick you should prioritize content like that you should be content first so publish content 3 to 4 times a week like i said before stick to your niche don't confuse your audience don't confuse your target clients as well about what is to do stick to your niche and i would also say experiment with long and short form content both and then see which one does better but again because you all are copywriters you might want to focus more on long form content just because it'll show your skill sets more you know clearly without you having to actually talk about oh i'm a copywriter this is what i do it will just naturally show in your writing so i would say prioritize long form content in your case also i would say avoid hitting the character limit because 3000 characters is actually a lot to read maybe once a month you have a post like that where you absolutely need to 
exhaust the character limit that's fine but otherwise try to hit like the sweet spot between 1500 to 1800 or even 2000 characters that's pretty much, much like you know good enough to go with also don't use links in the post if you add links always add them in the comments so in the cta you can mention like if you'd like to book a call with me then check out the link in the comments or subscribe to my newsletter check out the link in the comments so you just want to push that link in the comments because otherwise it will lower the reach of your content and i would also say if you're prior lead gen through linkedin you should prioritize client case studies and testimonials you should prioritize posts that are related to your target audience uh, even if they don't get you reach by the way like if they don't get you maybe you're averaging about 10000 impressions but you're getting good leads from them because your content is specific to who it should be meant for if that's the kind of content you're creating then you shouldn't worry too much about impressions so like i said there are some pieces of content that i create that's meant for leads and then there are some that are meant only for engagement and impressions like i want that uptick in my profile views and my impressions but i know that they won't get me leads and that's fine but then there are some posts that i know will tank in terms of impressions they'll get like 15 or 20000 views compared to my average 45 50000 but they'll get me a lot of inbound interest in my services so that's also one way to think about it like what is your goal and then be you, you should do okay it's fine if i don't get impressions as long as i'm getting leads which is what i want from this post the second thing about content is to have ctas right so i just wanted to give you some examples of the kind of ctas i have um so this is for my ebook that if you're a freelancer who wants to learn how to build an audience on linkedin that generates 3 to 5 inbound leads a day check out the link in the comments and then the link i i end the link to my ebook in the comments and so this is for freelancers this is also another one that's for freelancers the best thing you can do in these hard times is to make more money and one of the best ways to do this is to work as a freelancer so if you want to start freelancing my detailed step by step guide is in the comments uh, so th these are both links that i added for meant for other freelancers and i added in the comments but again if i want to generate leads for my business i usually use something like this If you are a founder or coach looking to bump up your reach and authority on LinkedIn, DM me. Let's chat. So I just invite them to DM me. I don't do links. I don't expect them to fill forms. I just tell them to DM me. That's it. And again, if you are a founder or coach looking to boost your LinkedIn impressions and have your story read by millions every year, DM me. We are now onboarding clients for mid January. So this is something I tweeted. I think um, starting of Jan or end of December. And then I just like I think this mid January thing is just added more clarity because then i started getting pe people like messages from people who wanted to start as soon as possible so just adding that one line was actually very helpful in the cta so yeah whenever you're creating content some posts don't need a cta that's fine but mostly if you again if you want to generate leads make sure your cta is clear about what action you want your target audience and your target reader to take now the third thing is your engagement engagement is so important engagement is key to growth on linkedin again whatever you're doing inbound outbound doesn't matter you should engage with people because one of the things is that comments can go viral too and the virality of comments is so much more impressive because the kind of people who are actually reading the comments usually like people, nobody's going to spend time reading comments right but if somebody is and if some profile after seeing your comment in my experience and with my clients it's just been a higher quality lead somebody who's been very interested in the service that they offer and they're almost practically sold so when i say comments can go viral i say that because one of the comments i did on somebody's post the post ended up going viral later so my comment ended up at like 700 likes and that's likes so you can imagine how many impressions my comment must have received so we had a comment then i've had comments that have had like 300 500 likes as well we've had our clients comments like we do engagement for our clients like on behalf of them we've had their comments get like 50 60 70 likes even 15 or 20 and then they get this one high quality lead that they've been chasing for so long and they they finally get with the quality of engagement obviously don't comment things like agreed great post good some value add something to the post and that's definitely going to help you boost your page views and your lead generation quality as well so comments can go viral so keeping that in mind you should respond to comments on your posts as long as you know 
obviously sometimes if you have like 200 comments you cannot but as many as you can on each post just respond to your comments and comment on 10 to 15 posts every single day now how do you find these people you could find them through hashtags so if you have a particular niche that you want to uh, be engaging with just look up the hashtag on linkedin or look up their job profile look up the keywords all these options can help Another thing that we really like to do for our clients is to maintain an engagement list. So we ask them, like in the first week of onboarding, we ask them, okay, who are maybe 10 or 15 people who that you would like us to engage with and who are your dream clients? Like you want to be in their radar. You want them to know that you exist, right? So we have this Excel sheet that we maintain. So if ever we cannot find a particular post on that day like people are just not creating good content sometimes that that's very by the way on linkedin it's difficult to find people to engage with so if you just have this list of you know 15 20 people that you really like who are also active on linkedin every day you basically just click the url in your excel sheet and every day you check if they've posted something and you have somebody to engage with so that's a great way of just making sure you're keeping up with your engagement and obviously over time, uh, LinkedIn will also pick up about what kind of posts you prefer more and you will start to see more relevant posts on, on your feed without having to do so much of the work. So yeah, an engagement list is definitely helpful. Try it out if you're struggling to find people to engage with. And always add to the post through your comments. Like I said, don't say agreed, don't say create post. It adds nothing, it adds no value and it doesn't even showcase your skills as a copywriter. So if you wanna get your skills through, they should be present everywhere in your comments, in your DMs, in your posts, anywhere you write online. It should be so clear that you are an exceptional writer that you know how to write and that you're somebody that like if they need a writer, you are the person that they should be speaking to. Right. So always add and always showcase like flaunt your skills, no matter what sort of writing you're doing online. Okay, and the next thing I want to talk about is cold DM. Like I said, I don't do much of this, um, but the few times that I have, I've seen good responses. So I wanted to touch upon this a little bit. So the cold DM format that you might have obviously heard of a lot is personalization, introduction, and CTA. So I want to give you an example of a cold personalized connection request that I sent out. I did this for like 100 people. I had a very high acceptance rate and I ended up booking about, I think, 12, 12 or 12 calls from this out of 100 people that uh, I reached out to. Keeping this in mind, personalization, introduction, and CTA, right? So this isn't a connection request. It has a character limit of 300, which is very short. This is why it's very short and precise. And it's, by the way, it's a reward because when you have only that limited space, you have to stick to the point, you have to get to the point, and you have to sell so quickly, like you have to do your best. So this is super helpful. So I just wrote, hi, Bhavesh. Hope Ad Tech 2022 was a, a success for you and the team. And this is just based on something I found on his profile. And I said, I'm Shreya and I specialize in organic LinkedIn marketing and growth. Recently helped my client garner 100,000 plus views in two months. I would love to connect and see if I can do the same for you too. Let's chat. And that's pretty much it. So I had this introduction, personalization, not the best personalization, but it worked. I introduced myself, what do I do? And I also added a, a, a case that we helped a client hit 100,000 views in two months. So that, that's a pretty good case study, by the way. And then we have, I would love to, and then we have less chat, right? So you're, I kind of push them that you first you need to accept my connection request and then we can chat. And all these people, like, like I said, have pretty good acceptance rate and pretty good closing rate as well. Not the best uh, cold DM, but it, it worked. It worked. This, this is a connection, personalized connection request, but I don't do that anymore because I realized that, you know what, blank connection requests have the highest acceptance rate. So when you send a connection request without any anything, any personalization, it accepted, like it has a 90% acceptance rate. And the reason why it's so important that somebody accepts your request on LinkedIn is because if you're on the free plan, you cannot DM somebody unless you're connected to them. So if you want access to their inbox, you have to be connected to them. And obviously one of the ways to connect is just send out a blank request, wait for them to accept, and then you can start a conversation about pitching. You could, you could in my, uh, it doesn't work after a point. So once they accept your connection request, it's just better to have that sort of conversation just leading up to, okay, uh, I saw this and I really liked it. That's why I wanted to connect. And then you lead into, okay, whatever it is that you do, right? So if you do like sales page copy, you can ask them about, oh, I saw this product and I was wondering like, 
Do you have a team working with you? What sort of, um, you know, are you planning to relaunch it? What sort of results are you seeing? Something like that. Or if you just want to give them tips about, okay, I just saw this and I wanted to say, like, try, try making one change and maybe you'll see, the, see a difference in your conversion rate. So you're just kind of like adding value and trying to lead the conversation into the direction that you want it to be led to. And yeah, so once they accept your plan connection request, then you could send a pitch or you could start a conversation about how to, you know, about how you can help them. So that's just a little bit about cold DMing. And that's pretty much it for today. So I hope that made sense. I hope you got something new out of it about LinkedIn lead generation. We'll probably have like 10 minutes of Q&A. And another thing I quickly want to say is that I have an ebook as well going deep into LinkedIn lead generation, but how you can generate, how you can create content and come up with content ideas and, um, you know, create content strategies for yourself and generate leads through it. So if you want to check out my ebook, you can just scan this code right here using your phone. And then you can use the word copy to get 25% off all of my ebooks. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you. All right. If you have questions, you can drop them in the chat or you can raise your hand using the hand raising tool and I'll add you as a co-host so you can come on camera to ask your question. Either way, it works fine. So we had, uh, I'll start it off with BJ's questions. BJ was asking do, whether you post in LinkedIn groups and does that help get traffic to your profile? I don't do that. And I don't recommend doing that either because after a point, it's the same people engaging with your content and it just looks bad on the profile. Like, oh, it's always the same five people saying the same five things. So I don't recommend using groups, at least not in the long term. Maybe you use it to start out, but don't use it in the long term. And then he's got a, a follow-up question. I, well, I post in the group, so it doesn't really matter. But he, the follow-up question is, if you do post in groups, what's the difference in the content you would post in groups versus your own timeline? Oh, I think, what do you, okay. So, okay, so how do you mean like an engagement group where somebody engages? No, in mean, a LinkedIn group. Yeah, in a LinkedIn group. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't use any groups, but we did it for a client once and we just reposted the same content from uh, his profile and it did really well. So as long as the content is relevant to the group, it's fine. I would say you can post the same content, totally fine. Also, LinkedIn has this, this pop-up issue when you make a post, right? And it will suggest a group that you want to post in, that a group that you're a member. It'll say yeah. this, like, do you want to post this in advertising professionals group? And then you can click yes or no. I usually click no, but that's, that's another option. Maybe, uh, maybe you could try out, test it out. Yeah. So Omar has got this question. I like to link to my YouTube channel on every social media post I make. Would it hurt me if I do the same on LinkedIn? Okay. Um, I would say don't do it for every single post or let the post kick off first on LinkedIn. Like once you've published the content, let it kick off, let it gain the impressions and then add the link in the comments. And maybe on the other day, just add a link instantly as soon as you post the content, add it to the comments and see the difference in the reach. Usually when there is a link in the post, even if it's in the comments, the reach tends to be affected just because it's an external link. LinkedIn doesn't want to push its audience outside. But if your core focus, for example, is to grow your YouTube channel, if that is the main purpose, then it makes sense obviously to have the link directly. It shouldn't matter how much impressions you're getting. It's just that even if you get like 5,000 impressions, but you're getting 5,000 impressions on something that's related directly to your YouTube channel. And if that's what you want, then you should go ahead and post the links. That's no problem. Or you could just upload the YouTube video native to LinkedIn and actually get the views because you're going to experience a drop off of people going from LinkedIn to another platform. First, like first you're going to get dinged on the reach if you drop a YouTube link and, or any kind of link whatsoever. Uh, and the second, you actually have to get people to switch platforms, all right? Uh, and that's, you're creating a lot of friction by dropping the reach and by asking them to switch platforms. If you actually want the views and to build your brand, you might as well, if the, if the um, 10 minute duration, just upload it directly to, to LinkedIn and you'll get a much better effect. Afshin asks, okay, I don't actually understand your question, Afshin, but uh, you might have to clarify. I've seen so many people with thousands of followers and they have strange headlines. What do you suggest? Like, I don't understand the question, Afshin. So you might have to clarify what, what exactly you're asking. Recommendation is when you're starting out is just to copy Shreya's 
Shreya's LinkedIn profile because it's uh, keyword stuff and it's going to rank on uh, on Sprint. That's some that's some thing we want. Is there's, there's different kind of styles that you can use. You can use like a benefit driven headline or a a snarky kind of head or whatever kind of headline. But in the beginning, especially for you guys as copywriters, as not trying to get clients, I would suggest that you stuff your headline with keywords. Anybody got any other questions? Nobody's raised their hand to come on stream. Well, that's okay. Oh, no, I had, I had, go ahead. Sure. Go ahead. No, I always take it as a compliment when people don't have questions, at least for the first few minutes. It's like, oh, some, something worked. All oh, doubts are cleared. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I had a question. Do you use LinkedIn sales navigator at all? No, I don't. Yeah. Cause I mean, you're getting everything inbound, so you don't have to, right? Yeah. Do you use any tools for your LinkedIn content creation, any automation tools, or are you just like native LinkedIn app and uh, Excel sheets? Yeah, native LinkedIn app and Excel sheets. Also, because once these, you know, scheduling tools for LinkedIn became mainstream, by that time, I already had over 100,000 followers on LinkedIn. So I'm like, I'm not risking my LinkedIn account because LinkedIn does tend to ban you if you use certain tools. So I'm just like, okay, no. And by the way, LinkedIn is coming up with a native scheduler. So now you can start scheduling content right from the LinkedIn website itself. It's not rolled out for me, but if you already have it, I would suggest like trying it out because it just makes your life easy. It's just bulk create content and schedule it for the entire week and you're sorted. Yeah, it's the same with the Facebook and Instagram. The the businessman on Facebook, you can schedule and they keep adding features. So now you can schedule reels and you can schedule stories, whereas before you couldn't do that. And you're using the native Facebook app. So I'm sure if even if bidding you on reach, like you'll be getting the maximum reach by using the the actual within the within the platform do you use video content at all i know you post shorts and, and reels and things like that on your other social media platforms do you use video on linkedin at all do you recommend that yeah you can use video on linkedin i tend to repurpose my reels once or twice a week it's just part of my content strategy on linkedin so for videos i think one thing important is that the engagement rate this is, this is a bit confusing but the engagement rate for a linkedin for a video is higher so let's say you have a thousand views, a video on LinkedIn will probably get a hundred likes, which is like, okay, 10% engagement rate, but a post with a thousand views will probably set like 20 likes, which is like 2% engagement rate, right? Videos get higher engagement in terms of engagement rate, but videos get lower reach. So overall it's, if you post a video content or you post a text post, the you know, they might have the same level of engagement, but you will see that the video has lower impressions and the post, the text post impressions. So I would say if you're posting videos, don't compare the kind of results you're getting with text posts because it's just different. And yeah, this is a bit confusing, but engagement rate is higher on video than on any other type of content on LinkedIn. And I mean, another thing is uh, you guys are all copywriters here. So if you're using the show, don't tell method, you'd want to lean more towards written content as opposed to video content just to demonstrate your ability um the <laughs> the problem is copywriters they want to get on video as well so i mean you're stuck you got to keep i mean this is the number one takeaway that i would or that i would give you from this presentation is you have to start publishing and there's no i mean there's no way around it there, there really is no way around it because even if you're old outreach strategy for getting clients the first thing people are going to do is click through to your profile and look at your profile. If your profile is shit and there's no content on there, they're not going to trust you. You're just like this random person with this strange, funny name, you know, that, and like a lot of you don't have optimized profile pictures. So you'll have a weird profile picture. And then like, it's just sets off red flags everywhere. Everything about your outreach strategy or lead generation strategy is about building credibility and trust. And so if you don't publishing either, you're just making your, like you're, you'll be able to get clients with one hand tied behind your back. Yeah. And I think another thing is like, just in terms of video content, I think the reason I started posting it even on LinkedIn is because I want more speaking opportunities. So I want to be doing webinars. I want to be speaking in universities and offices. And I think that's just, again, one of those show don't tell kind of things. 
So I would say if that is like, obviously you're, you're newbies, but if over time that is something you would want to do as well, if you want to do more consultation calls where you're actually talking to people, then you need to show up on video because you want to build trust that way. And it shows confidence. I think, you know, video content is definitely, definitely not a cup of tea. It definitely shows confidence in terms of, okay, you are a good speaker. You have good command over what you're saying and how you're saying it. And you know what you're saying. And that just builds trust as well. So that's also a benefit of having video content occasionally, if not too often. Disha is asking, you can stop sharing your screen so she can see us clearly. Yeah. <clears throat> and then it also, it's just a, like you can do 80% written content and 20% video. Because the thing about video is, again, it's, it's building with person that you're the, the lead or the person that you're reaching out to they can see okay this is a real person talking about stuff that they do and they sound like they know what they're talking about it's not a ghostwriter you know what i mean so like everything about getting clients is about creating credibility and trust so you want to at least throw a few videos into the mix and i mean you don't have to be confident you don't have to be extroverted to do it you're going to suck in the beginning, but you have to, you have to. Okay. Uh, and this is just a matter of putting in the reps. It's reps, 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 you get a client or, and you're going to build an audience. Um, I had one more question. Do you do LinkedIn lives at all? I used to, I don't anymore. No. Did you find them helpful in terms of, uh, you know, reach engagement, anything like that? They were helpful because uh, I used to not post video content at that point. So when I started doing LinkedIn lives, people were like, oh, you know, she's, she speaks. She, she, and she, she can you know, answer questions when we are asking them. Like she doesn't need time off to think about something. And I, that was interesting because I thought, yeah, people, obviously, I mean, if I'm writing, wouldn't you assume that I know stuff? But I think it just added, like you said, level of credibility that another layer that, okay, she is not just, you know, like nobody else is writing content for her. It's not something that she's Googling and putting together. She actually knows this stuff. So it was very helpful in that way, just kind of making people go like, whoa, like she knows things. But this was like a couple of years ago when video content wasn't mainstream. But um, yeah, I think for that, in that perspective, it helped you a lot when you start doing live, because if people can ask you questions and you can help them while you're on LinkedIn live, then it's just going to really create a good impression that way. Exactly. All right. So I guess that there are no more questions, so we can end the stream here. So Shreya's uh, link to her Gumroad is shreyapatar.gumroad.com. I've dropped the link in the chat. And the code, the code OPY, and you'll get, what was the discount? 25%. 25% off. And then let me see, what are the, what, what are the prices? Are they, are they, no, these are very, very affordable. And again, so like the freelancing book is $21. So 25% off is like 10 bucks off or 12 bucks off. The anthology is 800 rupees. It's like uh, 10. Yeah. And then the Twitter anthology is 10 bucks. So, I mean, these are great prices. I would, I would copy them, especially the anthologies, uh, because you can use them as, as swipes. And we do have one other swipe that's in our recommended or our must read, must read channel. You can use that as well.